ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் வெல்கம் டு தி செவன்டீன்த் வீடியோ ஆன் ஸ்னோ ப்ரோ கோர் சர்டிஃபிகேஷன் சீரீஸ் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் டூ இம்பார்ட்டண்ட் பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் ரிலேட்டட் ஆஸ்பெக்ட்ஸ் வித் இன் ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக் தோஸ் ஆர் கொரி ஆக்சலரேஷன் அண்ட் சர்ச் ஆப்டிமைசேஷன் திஸ் நேம்ஸ் ஆர் ஸ்லைட்லி ட்ரிக்கி பட் லெட் அஸ் ட்ரை டு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் வாட் தீஸ் டூ திங்ஸ் ஆர் இன் திஸ் திஸ் கொரி ஆக்சலரேஷன் இஸ் அ ப்ரிட்டி நியூ ஃபியூச்சர் ஃப்ரம் ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக் ஆஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் ரெக்கார்டிங் இன் மே ட்வெண்ட்டி ட்வெண்ட்டி ஃபோர் திஸ் இஸ் அ ப்ரிட்டி நியூ ஃபியூச்சர் பட் இட் இஸ் ஆடட் ஆஸ் தி பார்ட் ஆஃப் தி ஸ்னோ ப்ரோ கோர் ஸ்டடி கைட் ஸோ இட் இஸ் வெரி important to know about the query acceleration and search optimization is something which is previously available for quite some time with snowflake first let us try to understand what is query acceleration service a query acceleration aka qas can accelerate parts of the query workload in a warehouse okay when it is enabled for a warehouse it can improve overall warehouse performance by reducing impact of outlier queries which are the queries that use more resources than a typical query so as simple as it is they are going to identify and optimize the outlier queries the queries which are going to utilize more resources the query acceleration service does it by offloading portions of query processing work to shared compute resources that are provided by the service i hope you can understand it is all about parallel processing what it simply does it will identify the queries the parts of the query which can consume more credit usage or more resources it will simply offload it and it will parallelly execute it with the shared compute resources which are provided to the query acceleration service so what type of workloads which might benefit from qas it's all ad hoc analytics workloads with unpredictable data volume per query queries with the large scans and selective filters these are all the queries which can make use of the qas feature to identify the queries or warehouse that may benefit from the query acceleration service you can utilize the query acceleration eligible view and another table of system estimate query acceleration function we are going to discuss about these two things in a more detail and then what are all the eligibility criteria say it's like when it is going to be eligible when it is not going to be eligible eligibility criteria is simple the large scans with aggregations or selective filter large scans that insert many new rows it's all about large large since it's like large as going to compute more resources then it needs to be offloaded snowflake doesn't have a specific cut off what constitutes to the large enough scan to be eligible again another interesting statement from snowflake snowflake only marks the query as eligible if there is a high confidence that query would be accelerated if qas was enabled so contradictory statements but what they are trying to say snowflake takes care of things for you no need to worry if a query is marked as eligible for query acceleration service then snowflake did enough experimentation behind the scenes we will take care of it if you enable query acceleration that specific query will be enhanced with respect to the performance reasons for ineligibility when a query will be ineligible for query acceleration not enough partitions to scan even if a query has a filter the filters may not be selective enough the query includes a limit class but does not have an order by class a query includes a function that return non deterministic results such as examples of sequence or random say if you use a random in the query then it is a non deterministic kind of a result so these sorts of queries are not eligible for query acceleration service here we are going to discuss about two of the views which we discussed earlier first thing is system estimate query acceleration function using which we can identify what queries can be eligible this function helps to determine if previously executed query might benefit from the query acceleration service as simple as it is this is the query id you can see this is the query id say what you can do you can write a simple select pass json and then this 
specific function followed by the query id say if you previously executed a query you can very well take this query id from the query history view via the snowflake ui or from the snow query history view from account usage as well now if you fire this query the output is something like this in this you can see this thing is very important status is eligible meaning what this will be benefited from the query acceleration service then you can smoothly enable the query acceleration for that specific query again similarly you can see another example here you can see status ineligible meaning this specific query is not eligible for the query acceleration as simple as it is using this specific function we can smoothly identify whether i can utilize query acceleration or not again moving on to the another way of understanding the things using the query acceleration eligible view this view again helps to identify whether the queries and warehouses that might benefit from most of the query acceleration service for each query this view includes the amount of query execution time that is eligible for the query acceleration service now if you can see you can select query id eligible query acceleration time from snowflake account usage query acceleration eligible view order by that specific time by doing so we can find what is the query which can be benefited most from the query acceleration service again what are all the warehouses which can be most benefited from the query acceleration service and you can find the queries that might benefit most from the service in the specific warehouse in this case from the warehouse of my wh what are all the queries which can benefit from the query acceleration so large sorts of queries are available there by utilizing this specific view we can simply understand what are all the queries which can be eligible for the query acceleration so what are all the supported commands for qas it's simple select insert and cet as most people might be aware if you are from the data warehousing background if you want to create a table from the select statement then we create a cet as create table as select that is one important thing to know so these three are the sequels which are supported by the query acceleration service how i can enable a query acceleration service simple you can do create warehouse or alter warehouse if you are having an already running warehouse you can enable query acceleration equal to true as simple as it is this is how we can enable the query acceleration at the warehouse level now in the statistics part of the query profiler there is an interesting future for query acceleration you can see beyond the pruning there is a query acceleration in this there is a clear mention partition scanned by service scans selected for acceleration these two parameters are interesting to know so partition scanned by service is the number of files offloaded for scanning to the query acceleration scans selected for acceleration is number of table scans being accessed accelerated so by seeing the query profiler as well we can understand how much of query acceleration happened for the specific query now we are going to discuss about the search optimization service within snowflake this is again an performance optimization feature which is available within the snowflake how the snowflake is going to do the search optimization is the key differentiation between the query acceleration a search optimization service can significantly improve the performance of certain type of lookup and analytical queries the search optimization service creates and maintains the persistent data structure called search access path important thing to know it does it using search access path what is search access path it keeps tracks of which values of the table columns might be found in each of its micro partitions allowing some of the micro partitions to be skipped while scanning the table as simple as it is what it does it stores some of the micro partitions information that will be very very helpful while doing the micro partition pruning that is the important thing if you didn't enable the search optimization this specific search access path will not be available for that specific table obviously it will take the normal route instead of taking this specific shortcut route the search optimization service aims to significantly improve the performance of certain types of queries on the tables what are all those queries selective point look up on the tables meaning what if you do an where class with equal to conditions those are all selective point in look up 
and then a point lookup queries that returns only a small number of distinct rows substring and regular expressions like not like not i like not r like etc and it predominantly does lot of good things on the semi structured data like variant or object or array when it comes with the equity predicates when it come with in predicates predicates that use array constraints predicates that use array overlap substring and regular expression predicates predicates that check for the null values all these things in the semi structured data will be benefited with the search optimization and finally the queries that use the geospatial functions with the geography values can also be benefited using search optimization once you identify the queries that can benefit from the search optimization service you can enable the search optimization for the columns and tables that are used in those queries we are going to look at an example search access path maintenance is very transparent so snowflake is maintaining it it is very transparent please note there is a specific cost which is associated with the search optimization if you are utilizing this you need to pay more for both storage and compute now we can see how this can be implemented in a table for the best usage you can see this is the test table which is created with the columns id c1 c2 c3 and we inserted some of the values into the specific table now if you want to enable the query acceleration it's as simple as it is alter table table name add search optimization that will do the search optimization for you then if you fire a query here you can see this is the point lookup where id equal to 2 since we are doing a direct point lookup for the id value in 2 in the where class this will utilize the search optimization and it will enhance your query performance using the search optimization now as we discussed varieties of futures so far in our session itself we discussed lot of futures with respect to performance optimization one is query acceleration other is the search of op the search uh, uh, search optimization other one is all about clustering in the micro partition uh, video we discussed about clustering how we can define a new cluster to a table we can utilize the cluster by and we can define a new clustering key for the table and we discussed about materialized views as well materialized views is again an another way of enhancing the performance so when to use what that is the billion dollar question for most of you so snowflake provides a detailed representation on all these things first we will see when to use the search optimization service so these are all the supported query types and if there is some specific notes that is mentioned here so equity searches substring with regular expression searches searches for field invariant searches for geography columns and geospatial this is what which we discussed earlier in the previous slide as well so the search optimization service can improve the performance of these types of searches and the supported data types as simple as it is when it comes to the query acceleration it is all about the filters or aggregation if a query includes a limit the query also include an order by uh, this is again the eligible ineligible condition which we discussed the filters must be highly selective and order by class must have a low cardinality important point to note query acceleration works well with ad hoc analytics queries with unpredictable data volume and queries with large scans and selective filters that is the difference you can see query acceleration and search optimizations are complementary meaning what we can utilize both the things on the same table at one point in time both can accelerate the same query interesting thing to know moving on to materialized view and the clustering of the table again as we discussed we can use materialized view for the equity searches range searches and sort of operations uh, unfortunate that you can see the clustering as well equity searches and range searches you can use materialized views to define different clustering keys on the same source table that is how it works materializing views improves the performance only for the subset of rows and columns included in the materialized view interesting thing to note whatever columns which are part of the materialized view only those columns will get benefited based on the materialized view optimization a table can be clustered with single key which can contain one or more column expressions again interesting thing to know for one table you can have only one clustering key but we can have a composite clustering key meaning we can have multiple columns within that key but you can have only one clustering key for a table 
another interesting thing you can see this is the only differentiation factor so if you utilize any of these utilization say like search optimization query acceleration materialized view or clustering the table you will incur storage and compute cost so for all the cases compute cost is there only one thing for query acceleration storage cost is not there why because in the search optimization you can see the search access path is utilized so they need to store the data so storage cost is there materialized view is very obvious clustering of table is also very obvious we are completely changing the way in which snowflake is storing the data only query acceleration will benefit you by not consuming any of the storage cost with this we come to end of this video i hope this video has been informative for you as usual please do write lot of comments that will be very very helpful for me to enhance my contents thank you very much for watching this video